So this is a video um, about the latest update to Google Meet, which now integrates with Google Classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and present my screen to you so you can see my Google Classroom um, with the teacher view. And I'm also going to show you from the student view as well. So first of all, I'm going to come into my Google Classroom here. So uh, I'm just going to discard those changes for a moment. So here I am on my Google Classroom and you'll notice here there's a stream link showing. And the way that you do that is you go into your settings cog and you come down to general and you can see there's that meet link and you've got the option as to whether it's visible to students or not. So you can toggle that on and toggle it off, okay? So here's the link for our classroom meeting and that would be available on the student stream. So if I go to my student view, you can see in exactly the same place as it is on mine, there's a link for the students to join. Now, if you post that link as visible, it's really important that you are able to be the first one in the call. Otherwise, the students have control of the call. Whichever student is in first would be able to remove you and other people. So it's important that you as the teacher are the first one in the call. So personally, this is what I would do, okay? I would, in my general settings, every time I'm going to have a meet with the students, I would reset the code. So I've got a new fresh code every time and I would make it not visible to students. OK, that's the first thing I would do. I would then post something in the class, like, for example, we will be having a meet session at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. OK, and then I might say the link will appear in the header at the top, okay? And I would just post that in the stream. So the link's not available to view, but the students know to be looking out for it. So if I go into my student view, which is the blue outline, and I just refresh my stream, you notice that when we post something in the stream, it asks us to refresh. Okay, the students know that at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, we're gonna be having a meet session, but there's no link for them to access it. OK, and then at about five to ten, I would come in as the teacher. I would go to my settings. I would copy this to open a new window for myself. And I would take myself into the call. And in good practice, I just turn off my microphone to begin with in case there's any feedback. And I join that call to make sure I'm the first one in there. OK, that's the first thing. Then what I would do is make that link visible to students. Uh, because now I'm in the call, I'm happy that the students can join me. So I've done that. If I jump in into the student view now and just refresh, what we'll notice is that that link's now available. And as a student, I can just click on it. Again, mute my microphone, and I can join the call. And if I look at the people here, you see this is me as, uh, as the teacher. This is the teacher account, and I can't remove that student. Okay, or that teacher, whereas on the teacher account, I can remove the student. So if I go in the teacher account, do the same thing. Here's the student. I can remove them if I want to. Okay. So as a student, I might think that I'm finished and I've done enough today, so I'm going to leave this, the call. But I get the option to rejoin. So I can rejoin that call, provided I haven't been removed by the teacher. So I can just decide to go back in again and rejoin that call at any point. So when we want to finish our meet session as a teacher, obviously we don't really want students lingering around and staying in there. So as a teacher, you would ask everybody to leave. And let's just say, for example, everybody leaves, there's no problem. Um, so as a student, I leave, but I don't close this window just because I forget to. As a teacher then, I might leave the call and the student, would still have the option to rejoin. And that allows them back in again. Okay? And we don't want that to hop, we don't want that to happen. So just take that back to screen. Okay? We don't want that. What I would do in this situation as the teacher is I would then close that link down. I would come back into my classroom settings straight after the session. The first thing I would do is to take away the visibility of the link to the students, and then I would reset that link. 
And what that means is that our classroom meets and now has a completely different link and the students can't view it. So if I go back into my student view and I try and rejoin that previous meeting, so if I try and rejoin that previous meeting that we had, it won't let me do it. Let's do that again. And there's no link here to be able to access. So this particular call that we're on, this new link here, let's just reset it. Get a new one there, I'm just gonna copy that. I can open it up as a teacher. And I can join. But the students can no longer join that session. And even if they were to reopen a previous tab, and then try and rejoin a meet that I've now finished and reset the code on, they get this error message and they can't get back into that classroom. They can't access the new one because they can't see it. And they can't access the old one because I've reset it. Um, so it's a little bit more by way of control over those particular um, access within Google Meet. So just reset, really important, and then visible to students, yes or no. And hopefully that will make things a lot easier for us in terms of managing our Google Meets online with students with Google Classroom.